He is uh, the athletic director at Notre Dame. He is Jack Swarbrick and uh, set to uh, leave that position, but certainly left his mark on college football. Can't tell the story of college football, the good stuff, without Jack Swarbrick, the uh, Notre Dame athletic director, kind enough to join us here on the Dan Patrick Show. Oh. Flying the Notre Dame colors there. Jack saying hello to USC alum Will Farrell. Uh, Jack, thanks for joining us. Uh, Let me see how happy I am that Father John is not representing you know, <laughs> on this show. Wow. Uh, and I, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Did you did you take in all of that? I that, did. Uh, okay. I, I, I thought the obvious question wasn't asked. And that was who was the model? Who's uh, you know what we uh, I we don't know. That's a you? great question. Not me. No. We're going to look into that, yeah. Jack. Yeah. yeah. We'll, get, we'll get some of our best people on it. Uh, how did this concept come up with Notre Dame playing in, uh, in Dublin? I know that it's happened before, but how did it come up? Well, we, uh, we try very hard to get around the, the world and the country with these games. Um, this happens to be part of the Aer Lingus series, and so it's not technically a Shamrock series game, but... On average, every other year, we'll be in Lambeau against Wisconsin coming up. We played in Fenway Park, Yankee Stadium. We were in Las Vegas last year, and this is our third time in Ireland. What kind of hurdles do you go through trying to get something like this done where it's out of the country? It's, it's pretty interesting, uh, and, and I'm sure the NFL uh, no, has become much more of an expert than we are at this, but it's, it's a lot of simple things like the drugs that your team doctor normally has it a game, right? You're now, you're bringing into a different country. Yeah. And you've got to have somebody in that country who can help you uh, prescribe those drugs if they're needed. Um, players <laughs> I, pass. I, I've got a guy, Jack, <laughs> if, you, if, uh, if you're having any issues. Pl player passports. You know, how many, you know. Because not everybody has a passport when they're 18 or 19 years of age. Yeah, that's right. And uh, we usually about, we'll find out about a quarter to a third of our team doesn't have a passport. And so you're engaged in that whole process. Also, when we landed, our cab drivers were talking about Gaelic football and that Gaelic football is real football. And maybe that was the uh, uh, precursor to NFL football or college football. But they were talking about how violent it is where you guys get to wear pads and... Uh, they don't. So Gaelic foot. Did Gaelic football precede college football? Um, I assume it did. I was watching a little of it this afternoon, as a matter of fact. Yeah. It, uh, it's a really interesting game. I know nothing about it. Well, I, I was rugby. I, I said, what's the difference between Gaelic football and rugby? And then my cab driver goes, that's a good question. But you didn't know. Yeah, so the, the scrum is missing. I can tell you that. Yeah. There's, the, there's not that. Uh, how would you compare, if we're looking at the Cowboys fan base, is that similar, Duke basketball, Notre Dame football? Is there comparisons that you have with other sports? You know, I think what distinguishes us the most is the number of people who, for a host of reasons, some historical, some faith-based, um, support us that have never been to South Bend, never been to a Notre Dame game. You know, we were in San Diego several years ago, sold the place out, and, you know, those were a lot of people who were Subway alums in the sense that they've just adopted Notre Dame. So I think that's one of the big differences. Uh, can you sum up what's happened with college football in the last, where would you start? Complete disaster. How did, it, how did we get here, Jack? I wish I knew. And, and listen, I'm not, uh, every, everybody in the industry has to take responsibility here. I'm not uh, excluding myself from that. I think... Uh, the decision-making has lost its way in terms of the focus on the student-athlete and what's primarily best for them. Um, but we are where we are, and we have to try and make it work. I mean, we've been pretty uh, vocal in the past month about we need to find a home for Stanford and Cal. That You can't have two of the great academic institutions in the world not have a, not have a place to play. What kind of solution you got? We're working on it. Meaning? Well, th there's still consideration of the ACC as a home for those schools. Okay. And Notre Dame is lobbying for Stanford and Cal to join? Very much so. Okay. Yeah. And the Pac-12 dies? It's looking that way more and more every day, yes. 
But it, 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 can I go back and say this cha- if we didn't do this or we did do this, that would have changed everything or kept it? I mean, uh, Chip Kelly has talked about why don't we just have, you know, the football schools play the football schools and then the other uh, athletic programs don't have to travel to Piscataway or, you know, Syracuse or those kind of things. I mean, that, that seems like obvious that you could be able to still do that and not have the baseball team travel, uh, you know, all across the country. I'm all for more regional scheduling. Yeah. I, I, think, I think it makes a load of sense. It doesn't mean you need to separate out football operationally, right? I think, I think we can all still stay under the same umbrella, um, but I'm, I'd like to see much more regional scheduling. Could you see where we're headed towards the NFL model with college football? Let's say you have 50 teams uh, split it up with uh, divisions. Yeah, a little hard to get there because of the conflicting media rights deals and assignment of rights. And yeah. so those things don't ever line up on the calendar basis. So a little hard to see how you get there. But it's likely within the next year, uh, either in an action involving USC or a federal case in Pennsylvania, uh, student athletes, uh, football and basketball players will be declared employees. You think that's where we should be headed? I don't. Uh, it's, it's not about not supporting them and making sure there are ample benefits available. Um, we were the first school in the country to advocate for name, image, and likeness uh, back, in, back in 2015. But I don't think they need to be employees. We still want them to be part of the student body and, and involved in a lot of the same experiences that the normal student has. But is this based on greed? Or how much is with, with what's going on with, and the people in power who are making these, you know, the kids are going to be the kids. But you got grown-ups who have made decisions that seem like they're just based on money. Yeah, well, they're certainly based on money. There's, there's no question. And uh, some of that is the demands that have arisen over time for, to find more revenue to meet this requirement or this requirement. So I, I'm not terribly comfortable with the description of it as greed, but it is all about money. He's uh, the athletic director at Notre Dame, Jack Swarbrick. Uh, do you have a question for Will? Jack? Will, how do you feel about your new AD? Um, <laughs> Washington, former Washington AD, right? Yeah. Okay. Good poll. <laughs> 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 I'm excited. I think it's, a, you know, it's, it's great to have a female AD at USC. Uh, she obviously, uh, I mean, I can't say that I've studied athletic directors, uh, but it feels like it's a strong move. Right, let, let me, I got a question for you, Jack. <laughs> your your replacement is Pete Bavacqua. That's right. Any relation to Kurt Bavacqua? <laughs> I don't believe so. Okay. Oh, they're not related. I thought that they were somehow. I just related. saw that name and thought I didn't. Well, Former I baseball player. Yeah, right. Kurt, Kurt Bavacqua. Pete, Pete has never shared that with me. If they are, could related. we are. could we Google that and see? I thought I thought the uh, athletic director, the new one, is is related to him. Was he a Padre, Kurt Bavacqua? He was. Yeah. 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 All right. Maybe we learned something together here, Jack. Uh, perhaps. Yeah. Um, when, when you look at these service academies, um, are they going to be able to stay competitive with the uh, other Division I programs moving down the road? I sure hope so, and I think they've got a lot of things going for them. Um, there have been some rule changes in recent years designed to ensure player safety that's made it a little harder to be a triple option team. Um, but they've certainly had some, some recent years of great success between Army and Navy, so that's our hope. Uh, what would you have to hear to join a conference? Um, that we didn't have a media partner. Uh, that we didn't have a fair path to the college football playoff. If the NBC media plan was not there, would Notre Dame be in a conference? Yeah, if we didn't have somebody else who was willing to step up, yes. Okay. And would that be the Big Ten? I don't know. I'd, uh, it'd be interesting to have that discussion with, with each of the available you conferences. You haven't had those discussions before? We've had lots of uh, inquiries. We've never negotiated or How does that work when there's inquiries? What happens? Um, usually it's a president-to-president call. 
uh, where someone from a conference, a president from a conference, is assigned to call, in this case, Father Jenkins, and say, maybe are you considering a different path? And we say no. And then it gets down to you. Are, are you involved in the, the process after that? Yeah. With the phone call? I yeah. typically am. Yeah. What's the closest Notre Dame's ever come to joining a conference? Um, you know, I don't know that it was particularly close, but if we hadn't been able to find a home for our Olympic sports with the ACC, maintaining football independence would have been problematic. We needed a partner who would, uh, who, who would allow our Olympic sports to participate at the level we want them to. And it, I, I guess it's not as lucrative having your own you know, TV network, but joining the ACC, you're there with other sports. Uh, you do play some ACC schools, but is that a possibility down the road? Well, all the major conferences are a possibility. Okay. Um, we play hockey in the Big Ten. We have the other Olympic sports in the ACC, and football's independent. What are you going to do when you uh, step down? I don't know. I get a great piece of advice that said, don't agree to do anything for six months. So uh, okay. I'm going to I'm going to try and follow that. But, yeah, I'm I'm eager to stay involved in the in the industry. Well, thanks for joining us. And uh, thanks for the contributions to college football. Uh, college football will not be better off without you. That's for sure. Hopefully you stay in the mix there. Can you run the NCAA, Jack? <laughs> Actually, I think they have a great guy right now, Charlie Baker. Okay. I'm not sure you can govern that thing, but if it's governable, he's the, he's the right but, person but to try. Are we going to do away with the NCAA? Should we? You, 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 you can't have an association of 3,000 anything, right? There's just not enough commonality of interest. Yeah. So. Do we need it? We need, we, we need some governing entities. As you point out, it could be one someday, which is the 50 most well-known brands. Yeah. Um, but it's tough to govern across so many different models of college athletics. It's just hard. Great to see you. Have fun uh, over the weekend. And uh, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Right. Jack Swarbrick, the uh, university vice president and the uh, director of athletics. We'll come back. Uh, last call for phone calls. What we learned, what's in store tomorrow, right after this.